So hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the Noggin Zone and uh, today we're gonna talk about mushrooms. Now mushrooms can be quite weird and quirky. What's the, what's the first thing that comes into your mind when you think about mushrooms? Nope, uh, not that, something else. Other than that, food maybe? Yep. I mean, at this point we only think about food and maybe have a little bit of fun with mushrooms. But there is a lot more to mushrooms because these creatures are quite weird. They're not plants because they don't do photosynthesis and they're not animals because they don't move around, live in the dark and produce their own real food. So let's see what the future holds for these organisms because they're, they're amazing. Just, just listen to it. So the first thing is uh, the fashion industry. Now the fashion industry I'm talking about is clothes and leathers. Now clothes are usually made out of raw natural fibers like cotton, wool or silk or otherwise rayon and nylon and all the other petroleum based things. So we can remove the petroleum based things for a while because they are made of petroleum and they take like hundreds of years to you know just biodegrade. So they don't degrade at all some of them. So just remove it. So we're going to talk about cotton here. Cotton is, you know, we think that cotton would be good because they are natural and they biodegrade. Not really. They do biodegrade, definitely, but they take a lot of water to be grown. According to some estimates, 1 is to 10, 20 is actually the ratio of 1 is to 10, that 1 kilogram of cotton, if it needs to be dyed and produced, not stitching, just to produce it, it takes about 20 liters of water. And that is a lot of water. So it means that it makes it the cotton industry or the whole fashion industry. The total waste that comes out of industrial waste, 20% comes out of the fashion industry, which is pretty bad. And we don't really care. Fast fashion or wearing clothes. But these guys have came up with something like this. I know it looks weird or, you know, you might not even care about this because... They look just upset. I don't know who's going to wear that. But maybe some kind of leather. Maybe, you know, called Milo. People might wear those things. Because they exactly look like any other leather. But they are made up of mushrooms. Or, you know, certain composites of mushrooms are made. It looks pretty promising by my standards. Now, this is an image of RLC. And it has shrinked over the years. Now, the only thing... The only reason for this to happen is growing cotton. Now it lies somewhere around Kazakhstan, the border of Kazakhstan, and it was the part of the USSR, and USSR used it deliberately to channel down the water to the cotton fields so that they are able to produce cottons because, you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of army people, and they need a lot of cotton, exactly. So... So, all in all, the fashion industry is uh, technically um, using a lot of water, about 1.5 trillion tons, really. It goes directly into the waste because it has dyes and all the other chemicals. 1.5 trillion ton on a bigger scale doesn't sound like a lot, but let's remember 750 million people don't have access to clean water. And some do have, which is like really minimal. So... And in the future, it's going to be a lot of problem again and again. So mushrooms is a good shot because they don't use a lot of water. They grow in the dark and uh, it, they can be grown on trays. So in a small confined space, a lot of cotton can be grown. A cotton alternative to be sure. And it's a good shout. Definitely, if you are part of the fashion industry, you should take it, these things into con consideration. I mean, these things are pretty amazing. This might even change the way you live. Live in the house. And living in the house made up of mushrooms maybe. Now this brick looks ugly and weird. It's lightweight and it's made up of mushrooms. So they are probably living. You don't want a living wall, do you? So it, it looks weird. It sounds weird. But it is better than producing cement bricks or any other kind of bricks which definitely uses mining techniques and all those different things that are ultimately going to harm our environment. These are pretty good. Now, they can be also used in 3D printing by, you know, dissolving it and making it into 
cement like composites which can be used to build buildings like these which are completely 3d printed they are less expensive they can be grown quickly i mean made quickly also grown like you get and the most cool part is the expansion that's gonna happen in here if you break one of these walls or one of these bricks or there's a hole through the brick you don't have to do anything you can't you don't need to fill it again with cement or anything like that just spray it with nutrient solution the fungus the mycelium grows into it just it's it's done you don't even need to do anything about it you just need to spray it with nutrient solution done really it's it's amazing i i love it i love it and these are a few other examples how it can be used in constructions not only of buildings but also making furnitures or light bulbs and not light bulbs the light decorative thing that you're seeing on the screen right now they are made up of fungus pretty cool pretty unique in itself talking about the whole furniture thing let's talk about ikea right now ikea is going to use packaging material made up of mushrooms a lot of other companies are also stepping forward using composites made up of mushrooms which is a pretty good step when you talk about styrofoam and all those peanut packing peanuts and all those things those things are terrible because they can't be recycled they are really bad for our environment and mushrooms you know it's good you can just use the composites too as compost in your own garden so it doesn't only save the environment but also helps your garden so a win win right there so talking about all these futuristic thing of course we're going to talk about food like i mean mushrooms are really good they have all those vitamins and nutrients that you actually need proteins amino acids which are like amino acids makes protein so yeah also your favorite part psychedelics and not your like, i also <laughs> uh it's, it's weird but you know it's a good shout that you know a lot of uh states are actually legalizing uh psychedelics in the US and european countries too are thinking about it because you know they can cure a lot of problems like ptsd anxiety depression and all those things it's still in work not a complete solution for these things but you know it's a good shout that they might work so in the end i just want to say that these things look promising these things are amazing it's going to work and as i said all these industries are going to boom and they are booming for last like 5 years that i've seen Uh, the composites are actually being used you might even not know about this but a lot of wine packaging industries are using it a lot of uh, other packaging industries are actually using it the food uh, the usage of these mushrooms in food is also increasing because there are better methods to grow these and people are actually understanding how economically beneficial these mushrooms are so even if they grow in dark the future looks bright <laughs> I I I definitely need to stop these things. Uh, but till then if you love this video please give it a like, comment down below and till then keep learning, keep exploring and keep watching the Nogin zone. Thank you.